Okay, hey guys, it's Ben of Benzie Finder, and I'm here to do the first part of the Nikon 800mm f5.6 lens kind of introduction, review, demonstration. Uh, and so basically, I just want to kind of show it to you, show you the box, show what comes with it, show the actual lens itself a little bit closer, a little bit more detail. So, this is the box it comes in uh, the case, which is a very hard case, uh, aluminum edged, very well built, uh, very expensive to replace. Now the lens itself comes in at about $16,300 for the entire lens with case and everything. Um, just the case itself, if you need to replace it, if something were to happen to it, I believe it's about $600. So definitely not cheap. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy. There's metal clasps here on the front. I've already undone. So I'll just go ahead and open it and you can kind of see. Now the one thing I will tell you is that this camouflage cover on here is not stock. I will put up the stock image of what the lens looks like without it right now. And then basically this is a neoprene, like thermal kind of what they call a lens coat. It's made by a company called Lens Coat that I put over the lens. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like without it. This is the cover for the little adapter. And so you can kind of get an idea. And the idea here is a, um, you know, obviously it makes your lens not just like this big black blob. Um, helps to camouflage a little bit. And then also it has a little bit, a little bit of a thermal barrier. Um, which gives it a little bit of weather resistance and helps with um, like fogging and things like that and also makes it so that the lens isn't as cold to the touch if you're working in a cold environment. The other thing I'll tell you is that this foot here is not the stock foot that comes with the Nikon lens. This is this part here replaced is um, the really right stuff foot that they give that you can buy um, so that way you don't have to um, put a plate onto the Nikon foot and then hook that up. This is all just a one included unit. It's a little bit lighter, not noticeably. Changes the balance just a little bit. Um, so you have the lens here and then there's this little case in here that has, I keep some accessories like, um, let's see, I'll show you. Uh, I can't see what I'm reaching at here, so I apologize. I think this is what I'm mostly looking for. So when you buy this lens, it comes with its own teleconverter. It's a special teleconverter, very special. Don't lose it, don't damage it. And this is what it looks like. And this is a 1.25X teleconverter. And each one of these is made hand in hand with the same glass at the exact same time that the lens itself is made for like optimal quality. Um, so you don't have any differences in the glass quality that's between this and this. Uh, so it's meant to work perfectly along with this. So the lens itself is an 800 millimeter lens at full frame with the 1.25X adapter added on and makes it about the, a 1000 millimeter lens. And autofocus carries through and your sharpness you carry through is very, very good. Um, you get very little loss with it. I don't actually use this a lot, but it's a beautiful thing that they offer. This cannot be replaced if you lose or damage it. It's literally a one of a kind. You can buy maybe another adapter, but it will not be as good as this one. It will not be meant to work with this lens. So that's that. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this all out now and kind of show you, um, the one thing I will show you is I'll kind of take it out right now and just show you the case without the lens in it. And the reason this is important is that you can kind of see that this is molded and this is kind of a harder material, has a little bit of padding to it though, a little bit of give to it. And it's designed specifically to fit this specific lens. So when you put it in, there isn't any give um, and it's nice and fully protected for when you travel. Now, personally, I don't trust just checking something like this and it's really, really big to fit into a suitcase, this whole case is. And so I'm actually putting mine in a Pelican 1610 um, hard case and I can still even fit like one or two other things into the Pelican case along with the lens. And then I just check the entire Pelican case. And I feel like I still get just as good of, if not better, um, protection for the lens. So that's the case, guys. I'm going to back out now and I will show you what the lens looks like itself. All right, guys. So I backed out to show you kind of the whole lens, what it looks like by itself. I also, for fun, kind of set it here next to a few other lenses. Um, to give you just kind of a scale of things. Now, so you can tell I'm 5'9", five, 5'10"-ish. Five, um, so you could tell how big it is based on my torso. But this is an 85mm Nikon 1.4. 
You get the 14 to 24 wide angle 2.8, the 70 to 200, which is considered a pretty good size lens here, 2.8 Nikkor, and then obviously you have the big lens here. Now, it's not a hand-holding lens. I wouldn't recommend hand-holding it. The one thing I will tell you, I'll move this out of the way really quick, is I do recommend a very good tripod for this if you're gonna use this thing. And you can tell this thing's nice and beastly, highly rated Gitzo 5 series, can take a lot of weight. And then what you probably can't see because it's out of frame, is I do also use a really right stuff fluid gimbal head with it um, so I can pan and zoom easily. So having the right gear to use this lens with is important. So, lens itself looks like this. Now, like I said before, it's covered up. Now there is no hard lens cover case for this. This is a padded, um, soft front case for this. And you unzip it and it velcros here. And it opens up and it has, kind of wraps around the hood, which the hood is on here reversed, it's backwards. And when you take it out of that, it is fully exposed on the front end. That's a whole lot of glass. <laughs> yes, it could get very dirty very easily. And so then you take this off, you swap it around. And fully extended with the hood, this is the size of the lens. So it does get pretty sizable, not easy to carry around. Um, literally, or not literally, but um, finding a way to carry this if you're gonna go backpacking or going somewhere becomes very, very difficult. You need to have a very large pack to put it in. Um, they do offer a strap to carry it. There's little mounts here, little tabs on each side of the lens uh, that you can hook a strap to and carry it by the lens. Never carry something like this by the camera body that's attached to it, your coupling unit to where the contact is between the lens and the body um, would explode. It would never survive that. Uh, so this is it. This is your main grip area here, your focus here, your um, dials and programs here. Um, you can't see these, uh, but I will take a picture of them for you and kind of put it up on the screen so you can see what all these different dials are. There is a manual and automatic uh, adjustment turned on and off here. Then there is a focusing distance limiter. I don't know if that's what it's technically called, but basically it makes it so that it won't focus on, you, if you switch it on, it will only focus on things further than 10 meters away from you. So that way, if you're trying to focus something that's far away and you're worried about it kind of cycling through the entire focus of the whole lens, you can limit it so it only focuses beyond 30 meters, saves it, and it'll never try to go closer than that. So you don't have to worry about it cycling through an entire um, focus system. Um, then you have your vibration reduction. There's two settings for this, or three. There's off, there's normal, and then there's active. Normal being like if you're panning really fast trying to catch maybe a bird in flight or something along that. Um, active is for more like if you're moving and the subject's moving, or if it's something very fast like race cars or um, really high speed sports, anything along those lines. Um, then you have a memory recall option, which you can program and set to yourself. And then you have an on off switch for your tone, your focus beep um, on the lens. And then here you have your dial, loosen this, and you can rotate if you're trying to go from portrait to landscape while it's on the tripod. And that's basically it, guys. That's the lens. It is beautiful, it's amazing, it's heavy, um, just over 10 pounds. Uh, I have handheld shot with it, it is not completely unheard of. It is not recommended and you won't be able to sustain it, but in an absolute emergency, um, you know, if you crouched down and kind of tripoded your elbow on your knee or did something like that, you could probably make it work uh, resting it on top of something like a fence or a sandbag or a door of a car, something like that would work too. Uh, your best results are gonna be coming from if you can set up a monopod or a tripod with a gimbal head, um, you're gonna have your most success obviously. I've had this lens for three and a half months now, four months, somewhere in that range, and I've used it a lot. I do a lot of bird photography with it, is what I mostly do. I got it for whales too, so I could try to photograph whales from the shore. 
we had a really bad whale season here. So maybe next season will be a little bit better. Uh, and then I would say that as far as the price point's considered, it's very expensive. I don't regret purchasing it because I'm the type of person that um, I believe that a quality product deserves quality money and I understand that if you want the best results, you got to pay for those. Uh, I will say that it's probably not a hobbyist type um, thing unless you have a lot of disposable income. But for somebody who does photography for a living, fine art, wildlife, travel photography, um, I decided to go with it over the 600 millimeter because I wanted that extra length. I wanted to be able to get those things that are just a little bit further away than most people can get to. Um, and I'm very, very happy. Uh, the one thing I will tell you with any super telephoto lens that you need to keep in um, remember, I guess, is uh, heat will rise up off the ground at these types of lengths. And so even if you have the nicest, most expensive, sharpest lens and the best body in the world, um, some subjects will come out a little bit soft. So uh, I was recently photographing birds across the field and the, it was kind of the sun had risen pretty far up and it was getting warm. There was a lot of heat coming off the ground. And even though I was nail in focus, they weren't tack sharp images and it's what's called heat diffraction and there's just nothing you can do about it. But overall, very happy with it. Check out, I have a part two to this video. You can go, you can look at that. I use it live, I demonstrate how it works. I show you a live view through the lens on what it looks like to photograph with it. I show you raw unedited images so you can see what they look like coming straight off of this lens onto a camera. Uh, and it's kind of fun. So check it out. If you guys have any questions about this lens, if there's anything I can do, answer a question, anything like that, let me know. I'll do what I can to get back with you. Uh, until then, guys, thanks a lot.